Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Lauren Macquart. It's time for my weekly reading wrap-up kind of thing again this week. I've got four books that I finished last week and they're actually all pretty different. Uh, the first one that I finished is um, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This was a reread for me. It's a historical fiction and it's set in 1946, just after the Second World War. And it's written in epistolary form, so with letters, which is always kind of refreshing. We follow a Juliet who is a writer and she's kind of in a writer's blog, doesn't really know what she wants to talk about. And right at that time she gets a letter from a man who lives on the Guernsey Island, which is a channel island. But she gets a letter from a man from that, that island because he found an old book of hers and her name is written in it and he asks... I don't really remember what he asks actually. Uh, I think to give him news about what happened during the war because Guernsey did not get any information from the outside world and they end up sending one another letters and she wants to write about was his what his and what other members of the islands experience was during the war and what literature did for them because this man is part of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and there are other members also who discovered reading or who rediscovered reading during the war and all of these islanders start sending her letters to talk about what happened uh, and what their experience was during the war and she also ends up going to the island and meeting these people. This is a heartwarming book. All the characters are so charming and kind and endearing and lovely and homely and this is such a feel-good book. I really really liked it. As I said, it was a read-read and I loved it just as much as the first time. I would highly recommend you reading it if you're looking for something warm and fuzzy but still about an important topic like the Second World War because as we get information from these different characters on the island, we do get different views of things that were happening and of the special place that Guernsey had because they were occupied by Germany but still being British which was kind of weird at the time and how the kids had to go away and etc etc etc. Won't say more, recommend you reading this. Then I finished a non-fiction book which is called Endal Nochitz by Pauline Cornelissen. This literally translates to uh, and then something else but it it is the expression that you use when you say also blah 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 uh, so this book is actually kind of called Also. I don't think it's translated because it comprises of vignettes about random language things that Pauline Cornelis finds weird. She's a... Uh, comedian. Thank you. Uh, she's a Dutch comedian and most of her jokes have to do with language. Uh, so, for example, she talks about how a certain word becomes a hype and then disappears again and and what, how weird the context is that we use certain words is. It's mainly brain farts of hers, but it's all very funny. And the ones that I like the most, the ones where she, she also talks a lot about the pronunciation of words. And, for example, in Holland there are some words that people pronounce in a kind of poshy way and then it resembles the French, like the word rendement. You know, some people say rendement, which is more French and she talks about how weird that is. Uh, and then talks about other words that have the same thing like restaurant is restaurant, but some people would say restaurant, which then actually is act still different than from the accent that French people have, which is restaurant, restaurant, restaurant. Yeah, I hear a difference. I don't know if you can. Uh, but it's actually, it's it's just a nice little book to have. This was my uh, bathroom book. I realized a while back that when I was a child, we had books in the bathroom when you went to the toilet uh, with asterisks and obelix, and you spend a lot of time reading that. But now, when I go to the bathroom, I grab my phone. I literally go back to grab my phone because can't spend two minutes not doing something. So I figured if I am going to read something, might as well read a book. And this is ideal for that because these vignettes are one to max two pages long. So it was great for that. And it's just a, it was a really nice little book to read. This is actually her second book. And I might pick up her third to put that in the bathroom because now I'm back to looking up my phone again. I'd recommend this for any Dutchie who likes to 
read about language and who likes Pauline Cornelis. The next book that I finished is The World Without Us by Mirel Juchot. It's a literary fiction told from the point of view of six different characters who live in a small town in Australia. Four are related, they're a family, father, mother, and two daughters. And two years before this, the start of this book, they lost their youngest daughter who had a disease. I can't remember which one, I think cancer, but I'm not sure. And the two other characters, one is a man who moves to the village, sorry, it's so shiny, um, because he's fleeing his past. Uh, and he starts to have an affair with the mother. The sixth character is a man who grew up in the hive, like uh, the mother of the family. And the hive is a kind of hippie sect kind of community. And the hive burnt a few years prior. Uh, and there's a mystery around what happened there. This book tries to do a lot of things too much. So there's the mystery around the hive being burned down, the mother can't remember anything from what happened there. Um, there's a car that is found on the property of the family with some bones. Um, the family, they're all coping still with the loss of their daughter slash sister. The father is a beekeeper uh, and some of the bees are disappearing so there's a mystery around that. He's also an alcoholic and he comes from Germany. That was nice because it had some him talking German in the book. The mother used to be an artist, but now she's uh, but now she's still not coping very well and not functioning. Uh, one of the daughters is not talking. She stopped talking a few months after her sister was born. Uh, I can't remember what was happening with the other daughter. She's just painting trees, basically. Um, there's uh, the man that starts an affair with the mother. He's also coping with his girlfriend having had a an abortion when he wa actually wanted the child and he's also coping with the death of his mother and then there's the other character who's a believer that the end of the world is coming and he tries to convince others that we need to prepare and he's also coping with his mother slowly descending into dementia so there's a lot happening and the writing style isn't very clear it's 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 kind of fuzzy um, so I, I struggled a lot to read this because none of the storylines were very interesting the storyline that I found most interesting is that of the older sister Tess who doesn't talk um, but I nearly stopped reading this book a half dozen times and the only reason I continued reading it was because I felt this was one of those books that you had to just accept it was what it was and it would make me grow as a reader. And, um, so I did continue reading it, but honestly it didn't do very much for me in the end. Also, a thing that I, this book does and that I really don't like is that it doesn't make a difference between when, when it's written, when people are talking or not. So there aren't any quotation marks or, uh, you know, the, the dashy things. So you don't know when people are talking, sometimes you're reading a new paragraph and, oh, apparently this person was talking. And that doesn't help to make things more clear. So I didn't really like it. But I would recommend this book if you like this kind of writing style where it's not very clear and there's a lot happening and loss is a very big element. The next book that I finished is Hello Vitamense by Anusha Nzume. This translates to Hello White People and it's a non-fiction that talks about uh, what it means to, to be a white person in the Netherlands. I obviously picked this up to educate myself uh, and in this book Anusha Anzu does what is represented on the cover which means she's holding up a mirror to show us our whiteness and I really like the way she did it. Uh, she uses very clear language, she talks about our privilege, she talks about history uh, and she also entices us to go read more. There are some lists with other things we can read or podcasts, podcasts we can listen to or documentaries or other YouTube videos and she also shows how she grew and became aware of these things. Uh, she talked mainly about white privilege but also about exotism and uh, Zorte Piet, Black Pete, 
and uh, other topics, but she explains them very well. So this is a very good book for any Dutchies who are still at the beginning, like me, of their journey to educate themselves. Um, the information that she gave that shocked me the most, that was really new, is about French colonialism, uh, which I was surprised to find it here because this is mostly aimed at the Netherlands. But apparently, when in the 1960s, the former French colonies in Africa were starting to claim their independence, the first, I think it's in La Guinée, uh, France basically destroyed everything that they had built, so all of the roads and hospitals and anything uh, and anything like that they either took with them or left destroyed completely behind them. So in order to prevent that from happening, the leader at the time of Togo proposed that Togo would pay France for these gifts of civilization that France gave uh, Togo in this case. Uh, so Togo would pay a colonial tax and that colonial tax is still being paid as of today and it comprises at least at the time so I figure still now of approximately 40% of their GDP which is a huge amount and the other African countries that at the time claimed their independence chose the same option because then at least they would keep for example a hospital uh, and France also forced these countries to still now put their national treasury in French banks. So France is still also making money from that. And in the book there was a link to an article that talks more about that specific subject. But how is that not something that we know? Um, so yes, those were the books that I finished last week. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Love to hear from you in the comments. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.